Hey everyone, it's Tammy at Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am making a face cream or face lotion. Um, I absolutely adore this. It's made with all good things. Hyaluronic acid is in it, which is so, so great for your skin, especially us, us ladies that are a little aging. <laughs> so it's really, really good for your skin. It's actually good for anyone's skin. It's so, so great, especially if you have dry skin. I thought I would just go ahead and show you how I make my cream and uh, I've started off by sanitizing all of my utensils and my bowls so they are drying. I like to let them air dry if I can, if I have time. So as soon as those are completely dry, I'm going to get myself ready and I'll move the camera down and we'll get on to making some face cream. In my bowl here, I already have my aloe vera liquid. Now this is my heated uh, water phase. So I'm going to tear that and now I'm going to put in my hyaluronic acid. I know I'm butchering that. No, I am. Me and words. I need to get my notes out here. Um, this calls for Okay, so I'm going to start with this, but I think I'm going to run out. So um, I have my new batch made and ready to be, oops, bottled. I'll just go ahead and do that. Hyaluronic acid is probably the most expensive ingredient I've ever bought. Um, and you, you buy it in like at one gram to five grams. I usually buy, I think five grams at a time. It, it is the, just the tiniest little bit. It's kind of scary <laughs> to buy that much, pay that much for just such a small amount. Perfect. So you have to process that down, the hyaluronic acid. You can't just use the powder, it does create quite a bit, um, but at the same time it is so expensive. But it is so, so worth it. It's like the star of the show on this. Um, it can absorb uh, a thousand times its weight in water, so the, when you put that on your face, you are, it's also a, a humectant, so it draws water and moisture to your skin. And that's why you will see these really high-end face creams touting the hyaluronic acid, because it's wonderful for your face. I need um, my chamomile water. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see my in <laughs> ingredients here. Um, yeah, all right, I'm gonna tear this and put my chamomile water in here. I do have to preserve this, so I try to be really, really careful on my uh, measuring because I want there to be enough preservative in the formulation to do its job. Uh, so I'm, I'm super careful whenever I have a preservative going on here. And, uh, next is lavender hydrosol. All right, I need some DL panthenol. So when there's when there's just a few grams of an ingredient, I, I like to get my smaller scale out. And this one only calls for 12 grams, which will be quite a bit. Um, panthenol, which is a vitamin B5. It doesn't weigh very much, so it, it looks like a lot. Vitamin B5 is a skin moisturizer, so it's really, really nice for your skin. Um, it can also be considered like an anti-inflammatory. Not that I'm making any medical claims, because I am not making medical claims here. Nothing like that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's good for your skin. And <laughs> call it, call it good. Um, I need sodium lactate. I'm gonna go ahead and put that straight in here. And then lastly in the heated water phase is, and I'm going to butcher this name, it's Propandiol 1-3. I do not know how to say that <laughs> at all. Uh, so let me, let me get that in there. Okay, next is the heated oil phase. This bowl is way too big for what I need, but it's... I, 
I, my other my other stuff is isn't clean. So I'm going I'm stuck with it. All right, I need some emulsifying wax. I'm adding some evening primrose oil. And then some argan oil. Definitely a luxury oils. It's a luxury face product. And then I'm also going to put some um, dimethicone in here, which is kind of like a silicone. But because the uh, urea can give kind of a soapy feel to the skin, if you use too much of this, it will, it doesn't um, absorb as easily because of that urea that we're going to put in later. Uh, but urea is worth it. It's worth the struggle. So I'm going to put a little bit of dimethicone in here. And um, we'll see, we'll see if that kind of can combat some of that soapiness that you can get. So I have my heated oil phase ready. I have my heated water phase ready. So at this point, I'm going to have to take those upstairs. I'm going to put them in a water bath and, and heat them. Anytime I make a lotion, and this is a lotion, I will heat my water to 170 and hold it there for about 20 minutes. Not an easy thing to do, I know, but because it goes hot, it goes low, and I have an electric stove, so that makes it even harder. <laughs> but um, I want to kill anything, any kind of bacteria or anything. I want to keep it as safe as possible, and just holding it at that 170 for 20 minutes to me is is worth the struggle that it's going to give me. And um, I'm also going to weigh this actually right now. Oh, let me tear it. Okay. So when I'm done heating this for 20 minutes, I'm going to be able to then top it off with some water that I'm also going to be heating for 20 minutes. And I'll be able to take it back to this, uh, this gram uh, weight. So I'm going to write this down. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I understand that I did weigh my spatula in here. And then, yeah, when we come back, I'll top it off with whatever water loss is happening has happened and we'll go into okay, the cool down I've phase. already topped off my water so this is back up to the weight it was when I started heating it through so now I'm going to put my water into my oil and now I'm just going to blend it for just a few minutes it's still so hot I'm going to set this aside and then while that's cooling, I'm going to go ahead and get my cool down ingredients ready. So for the cool down phase, we have a lantoin, which is like I, I call the hyaluronic acid the star of the show here, but a lantoin is the powerhouse. It is so great. It moisturizes, it soothes, it exfoliates, hydrates. Um, and smooth. It's just such a, it, it rejuvenates your skin. It's really, really, really a great product. It doesn't take much to do all of that. So we are going to add in the Elantoin. Next, I'm going to get the urea. This urea, it will like it, less, it loosens like dead, scaly skin. It's good for that. And it also draws moisture to the skin. Um, so that's, that's great. And it stimulates your skin's healing processes. So that's what urea does. And that's why it's worth the struggle with the soapiness that it can sometimes give if you use too much. So if you're using this product and um, you find that it's a little soapy on your skin, back off. It really takes very, very little of this lotion to do the job. I am one gram shy of my urea. One gram. But I will have to make that up in another area of my recipe because I don't want my recipe percentages to be off when, especially when we're talking about the, um, preservative. So I'm going to add just a one gram of water 
to my mixture here of that hot water that I had and then we're going to call that good. Lastly is our Liquid Dremel Plus. You do have to preserve this. Anytime you use water you do have to use a preservative. Um, I had a friend try to talk me into making products without a preservative um, and just telling customers that they had to keep it in the refrigerator. I was like, I am <laughs> not interested in uh, doing that. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to say no, right? <laughs> okay, so here's my cool down phase, ready to go when this cools down. And what I haven't done yet is get my jars uh, uh, ready and sanitized. So I'm going to go ahead and get those ready too. And when we come back, I'm going to be blending this again and we'll go on to the next step. Okay. It's starting to get quite cool. So I'm going to go ahead and get my cool down ingredients in here and, uh, blend those as well. And I had forgotten to add my extract, calendula ext extract. So I'm glad I had all of my ingredients pulled or I would have completely forgotten to add that. So because I was one gram shy on my uh, urea, I just added an extra gram, gram of the calendula extract. So now my, my recipe total is, is accurate. And it's ready to package. I'm going to go get my jars. I went ahead and transferred this over to the smaller container. It's much more manageable for me. That other glass bowl is so heavy and the spout doesn't really allow for a very good pouring. Um, but I wanted to show you my jars. Now this is the jar that I have been using for, for a long time, but I'm, I'm down to two of these. I only have two left. And I just really think it's very um, pretty. I love the uh, silver top that's got like a frost to it. The frosted jar is very pretty. These were out the last time I ordered them. I couldn't get them or the last time I tried to order them. So I had to go with the black top, which is still fine. I just like that one better. Um, but this is the jar I'm using today. Um, I'm kind of bummed about that. I, I really like my silver top to jars. Uh, all right, I'm going to get these poured. Okay, I have them all jarred up and I'm going to let them cool on the back counter probably for several hours or even overnight and then I'll cap them tomorrow. I'm interrupting my outro. <laughs> I thought I would show you how I package these wonderful face creams. Uh, so I have all of my labels printed. I have my, my, yeah, my circles for my, the inside of the box. And then I have my box labels and I have my tissue paper. I have everything ready. I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see. I'm only going to show you a couple. It's not like I'm going to take up a lot of your time, but I, I created these circle labels off of Canva and then the online labels and they just barely fit on these jars. And then I have these cute little boxes that I bought. Heavens, I have no idea where I bought these things at. I'd have to look. Maybe Paper Mart. So I open those up like this. And then I take my tissue paper and I can get two boxes with one uh, piece of paper here. So I'm gonna, I fold it in half like this. And go ahead and cut it. All right, and then I kind of use my box as a measuring guide, and I just fold this in thirds. Fold it once. Sometimes I have to fold a little lip here, just so it's just like that, so it'll fit in here nicely. And I just kind of tuck it in so it has wings. Let me do this backwards for me. And then I add my jar. And now there is some play in here, especially with this black jar, which is a little taller and a little narrower than my other jar. 
So my other jar fits in here a little bit better. I may actually just go put get some tissue paper, I think, and and make that a little more secure. So I'm going to go do tissue that. paper, but I meant crinkle paper. Isn't that tub cute? I put my lip balms on in this tub on my uh, uh, craft show table when I'm at craft shows. That'll secure it a little bit better. I don't normally have to do the crinkle paper. So then I'm just gonna fold this in half like this. And then fold this one. And then I take my little hummingbird sticker. I make these, kind of like my logo. Here you go. So I fold this up, and then I have my top sticker. This is a new new label for this. So I was struggling on the size a little bit. I Canva is different for me in that it's a little smaller than I normally do. I can't I can't tell the the Canva the whatever that software. What size? I want to input like a specific size. All I can do is drag it and watch the little size numbers and it's it's not exact. Uh, so I'm, I wish I could figure that out. I'm sure there may be a way. And then there's the back label that has the ingredients, instructions, and all of my information on here. And I usually just put this on the back. Just like that. There we go. And then when they open it, they get a beautiful little tissued contained box. I love it. I was pretty happy with that. I'm not not very good at the whole, you know, packaging and making things look pretty. It, it's not something that I've been very good at. Uh, but, you know, I thought it was, I'm kind of proud of that one. I liked it. So, you know. I adore this face cream and I use it every single day uh, it's it's just great and um, I'm so glad I'm so glad for it all right put this in here just kind of stick it down in there get my jar a little bit of shred you know, part of the thing, part of the, I don't know, I feel that when I want my customers buying from me, I want them to feel like I've put some thought into it. I want them to feel like, as opposed to, you know, maybe the really higher end products would, would go to the trouble of, of making a product feel um, a little more special, a little more thought. You know, I I don't know, but the things you get at Walmart certainly don't. They don't put the thought and the effort into trying to make their customers feel special, and I, I think that's part of the joy I have is doing what I can to make my customers feel like I care. I'm taking the time to make them feel special, I guess. I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> oh, well. I tend to ramble. <laughs> I try to cut most of it out for you guys because you don't want to hear me ramble. I'm really happy with my labels, too. I, you know, I'm sure you've probably heard me say I've had to redo all my labels. And so I just took the opportunity to kind of revamp my labels and simplify them a little bit, kind of unify them so they all have the same feel. Um, I'm really, really happy with them. I've changed my labels over the five years I've been in business so many times. It's been kind of crazy, but there you go.